Hello everyone, Crydax here, and welcome back to Space Age, the DLC for Factorio that we uh, are loving so far. It is now day two of our 12-hour streams, aka, well, it's a, the 24-hour stream for old people. <laughs> two 12-hour streams in a row, with some sleep in between. So, um, I've done a few things since the last stream, just kind of derping around as I was waking up this morning with some coffee on stream. So one thing we did is physical projectile damage five. The reason that matters is because it's the first one that affects cannon shells. So cannon shells were not affected by any of the previous ones because tanks are in blue science probably. And so that's a huge boost, right? 90% is doubling essentially. We also researched the good old tank. So now we have uh, cannon shells researched. And will I go with explosive cannon shells or regular? I'm not sure. Probably explosive cannon shells. Maybe we'll do both and try it out. They're basically the same recipe. You just need one more explosives. Um, yeah, and the physical upgrade dam upgrades the physical and the explosion damage to these. So that's great. So we're going to be working on a tank. Um, I also got these automated, the storage and passive provider chests. We got some more robo ports placed around the base. So now we have at least a semblance, oh, not quite, of a network. Uh, I need to get that connected. And I put in some logistics spots to the network. So now we can trash our trash slots like this. And it's beautiful. So lots of good things going on for us here. Um, and I did set up the uh, what's it called? The tank, <laughs> the tank roller. So we are rolling for an uncommon tank here. Oh God. <laughs> we're going to spend a lot of resources on tanks. The reason we're rolling is because look at that. Tanks have an equipment grid now. So by rolling an uncommon tank, we're going to be able to fit more solar panels and more shields into it and some exoskeletons and whatnot because tanks can have legs, which is <laughs> hilarious and amazing. Uh, so yeah, having an uncommon tank is going to be a big boost. It also gives it a lot more health. Uh, how much more? Uh, don't ask me. It's 2600, so it's 30%. I think in general, the boosts are 30% to uncommon, and then 160% to rare, 90% to epic, and then 150% to legendary. That's kind of the general scheme for quality boosting of things, um, just so you know. But yeah, there you go. So that's going. Uh, it's eating all of our red circuits, but that's fine. We'll hear the alarm when it goes off, I think. Wait. Oh, it's done. Look at that. While we were sitting here. Not bad. Not bad at all. I only needed 23. Sweet. Uncommon tank. All right, well, that was insanely lucky. Uh, okay, so a couple other things we need to do. One is grab some solar panels so I can craft the panels for the tank. So the tank has a grid of seven by nine, which is 63. So I'm gonna want probably three or four shields. And mostly, because I don't have the ability to make lasers yet, and I haven't done exoskeletons yet. So I'm mostly just going to want uh, shields and batteries. It'll just make my tank, like, invincible. So we'll do, like, four shields. Uh, what do I need for this? More steel, probably? Yeah. 20, 20 of these, 30 of these. And, and some batteries. Let me grab some batteries for my inventory. Um, more steel as well. All right. Six batteries, maybe. You're really hoping you can make a blueprint that uses a combinator to set a recipe for quality rolling. Oh yeah, there's gonna be all sorts of blueprints that people are gonna work on for quality. Uh, once we get the recycler, I'm probably going to spend a decent amount of time trying to figure a good one out. That's kind of like a 
make anything higher quality type loop. But yeah, let's get these networks connected here. One there is going to be good. And then... Anything else we need to research before we go off on a merry, merry journey? Cannon shell shooting speed 80% is also huge, so let's get that done. I was wondering if that was going to be a big percent, and it is. That's almost twice as fast. So. Let's now look towards... Oh my god! What the frickin' heck? Oh, jeez. Uh, we've got an army busting down our door here. Ah! I don't... I don't know if these turrets can handle it. Maybe they can. We do have a lot of damage upgrades. Let's see what happens. Uh... The answer is kind of, sort of, not really. I think they handled it, but only barely. All right, so bots. They say they're missing material for construction. Did I not? Okay, yeah, there we go. Oh, this is not connected to the network. That's what's going on. And that, oh, this one's not powered up. That's the problem. I was going to say, I'm like, why would I build that disconnected? There we go. Though, maybe I didn't put... No, I did. I did. That has a... Okay, we're good. We're good, we're good. Alright, so... I can always... Hit control myself here. But, yeah, we're going to need to figure out where those came from. Because they must have expanded... Oh, they're right there. Yeah, they expanded into the pollution cloud quite a bit. And are causing a ruckus. So those are going to keep causing a ruckus if we don't take care of it. You like the way the herds move? Kind of creepy. Yeah, it, it certainly is kind of creepy. For me, half the fun of Factorio is the design. How the blueprints for your own use. Yeah, exactly. I feel... Oh, I'm not on my military hotbar. Deerdorf, back at it again. Yes, I am. It's a, it's a fine day in the neighborhood for Factorio. Get out of here, biters. You're not welcome here. This is my land. This land is my land. This land is my land. Oh, that's why my bots haven't been doing anything. I don't have any bots. <laughs> I I was wondering multiple times over the last five or ten minutes, like, why why are my construction bots not doing anything? It's because I put them all in the network. Um, that's funny. I also can start doing uh, personal requests. Let's do general requests as our first logistics group here. So just a reminder, logistics groups allow, um, basically allow us to turn on and off requests. And that applies to not just our own personal use, but also to like requester chests. And, and if you change the group, it changes for all the things that are using that group. So super nice. Uh, it works for space platforms, requester chests, personal stuff, tanks. Um, I'm not sure you can sing that song when we are the baddies. No, that's exactly why I'm singing the song. It's the irony. Really, dude? Come on now. Also, this is going to be the Sisyphean task. I should just leave you there. We should enshrine you because my bots are just going to repair that forever. That's funny. Also, King Frank Bob, we will get your name in walls. Um, it's not too long. Will you still be here after the YouTube episode? If so, we'll just do it in between episodes. 
Can we import or export logistics groups? I don't think you can. Um, I think you have to make them by hand. There will probably be a mod for that. That's my guess. Um, so, let's grab our bots and then, well, I guess we can do this. We'll let the bots grab the bots for me. Boom. Whoa, that was weird. Like chunks of three. Um, okay, now I need to automate cannon shells. I have a tank, but I have no, nothing that I can shoot with it. So. Um. Oh yeah, sorry King Frank. I mean like after, you know, the YouTube recording part is done, which will be in like the next 40 minutes or so. All right, so I want to destroy all these bases with the tank. So we're going to need cannon shells for that. Maybe. I could just bring a ton of firearm magazines. We we are going to get a lot of damage, but I want cannon shells. So that means we're going to have to get explosives going. And explosives need something. What is the shortcut for Factoriopedia? It doesn't show a shortcut on the thing. Oh, so the shortcut is just alt left click anywhere on the screen and you'll get it open at least, I guess. I don't know. I guess in my mind there would be a shortcut to just open it, but the shortcut is opening it to something. Um, okay, so what am I looking at? Explosives? I couldn't find them. So it's coal, sulfur, and water. And then we also need steel and plastic, which is also just coal and iron. So, coal, sulfur, and water. So kind of like right here, you say? Coal and sulfur and water? Easy enough. Um, so explosives can go right here. I think they go pretty slow. Eh, they're not too bad. And I'm going to make it so that I can actually insert or outsert regularly here. And then connect up these bad boys. And that should be it. No, I did something wrong. Oh, we didn't hook up the water. There we go. I kind of ended up with a fluid bus right here on accident. I didn't really intend for that, but it seems great. Okay, so now we're combining explosives with steel and plastic. And there's plastic here. What if I put... Uh, we're probably going to want a full belt of plastic, though, at some point. I was going to say, what if I put the explosives on the plastic belt? But let's not. Let's not do that. On second thought, let us not go to Camelot. Tis a silly place. All right. We'll just bring... Maybe over there. I don't know. We're starting to spaghetti pretty hard these days. I need to I need to expand the bus to the right rather than fitting stuff in the base we already have. <laughs> um, we just keep jamming more into the same space. Uh, it's not gonna work forever. Not gonna work forever. All right, there's steel and then plastic. Plastic we didn't put on the bus. That should be on the fourth fourth line here. I think. Oh gosh, what's going on here? Ugh, poor inventory. 
probably can get rid of some rails for now. Alright, so there's plastic. Any flaw in a base? Yes, yes. The start. It is. Of course, this is just a starter base. It can. It can look like whatever. We're just bootstrapping to actual, you know, organization. Um. Any flaws in the base are ignorable. This is just a starter base. All right. Wrap that back around. And then we'll just carry this up. Did I bring the wrong thing? No, it is plastic. Okay. Cool. Alright, so here we can make cannon shells. And explosive cannon shells. They stack to a hundred and a hundred. Do something like this. I'm guessing I'll mostly use explosive cannon shells, but yeah. Now that we have five planets, we have uh, yeah. In space platform, we have six starter bases. Hello, Igor. How's it going? Talking about quality, quality modules is gonna get confusing. It sure will. I was talking to um, Sviplet, and I was saying he's someone else that was. Uh, playing in the beta and I was like I think quality modules should have been called something else because quality is the mechanic and having the modules themselves have the same name as the mechanic I think invites confusion I think it would have been better to call them upgrader modules or something like that that's not a great name um, precision modules yeah just some some other name I think everybody would have been fine with it and then it would have been less confusing to talk about quality modules versus the quality mechanic versus quality items. I think it just ends up being too many, too many words where you're saying the word quality over and over and over again. Um, I don't, I don't think that's good, but at the end of the day, it's probably fine. We'll live. We'll get used to it. All right, so let's grab our tank. Where is he? And we can all oh, put stuff in the gigantic seven by nine equipment grid because it's uncommon. So all of this is extra space that we wouldn't have had before. All right. This is great. This is great. And it'll regenerate 48 hit points a second. I'm going to let it sit here and start charging up the shields. I assume when you deconstruct... It's been so long. Like, I should know this. The equipment grid stays and the charges stay, right? They don't have to, like, charge from zero every time? Yeah. Yeah, it does. So. Uh, Aylor, what are you saying? 450 extra kilowatt over a common one? Kilo- what? Kilowatts. Oh, 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 I see what you're saying. As far as solar panels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so it's going to take a while for those cannon shells to get all figured out. I should also craft, um, what's it called? Piercing ammo while we're here, which is copper, steel, and iron. Um, so we've already got the steel. And now we just need copper and iron on a belt, which is like right here. Uh, something like this, and this, and this. 
this. Um, though, I guess it needs to be here. Oh, I miss the 90 degree inserters. Indeed I do, I do. Oh, that still doesn't even work. We have to go, we have to do some crazy squiggles here. There we go. <laughs> All right, so that should give us what we need for piercing rounds and that'll be handy. Um, this is one where just for fun, we can throw some quality in here. Get some uncommon, uncommon piercing rounds for those really important times. I mean, it, I guess for my own personal machine gun, having uncommon piercing rounds would be nice. If we can get enough of them to have like a whole stack. Because, and we've talked about this many times before on the stream. 30% more damage is not 30% more damage. <laughs> you heard it here first. Uh, and it's because of the way armor works, right? Enemies have a flat armor, not just a percentage armor. And in any video game, and many of you who have played video games with armor understand this, any video game where flat armor is a thing, adding extra damage to your attacks adds more than that damage to the final HP removal the enemy has. So it's pretty great to have a 30% damage boost against enemies like big biters that have eight armor, right? Because when they have eight armor, this is really only doing 6.4 damage, not 14.4. And so since it's only doing 6.4 damage, when we add something like three damage to it, that's actually a 50% damage boost. Anyway, I digress. I'm interested to see what that all looks like. But look at our copper. It is a sad state of affairs. So we need to start setting up a train receiving station for our new resources. And what I'm thinking is we're going to have one train line, but multiple stations. And we're going to make it a one way or a two way because this isn't going to need a ton, a ton of throughput. So you can judge me all you want for a two way train station, but it's what we're doing or a two-way train network. Um, so we'll put it here. I think this is a good space to drop off ores. Uh, let's destroy trees and rocks, though. In this area. Oh, let's watch the smart bots do their thing. Okay, that doesn't seem very smart. Shouldn't these have been deconstructed by mine, too? Hmm. Maybe those weren't in range of my own uh, network. I don't... My network's not very big. But, anyway. Uh, okay, so we need a couple train stops. I am going to do... Uh, I think one, four trains. Ugh. Yeah. Super force build, baby! Get out of here, pipes. We don't need you. Um, but I do need to replace them. We kind of need you. You're only keeping the base running. Alright, so then we're gonna have a train stop. Do I want to do one fours? Yeah, one fours are nice. Uh, it's just... Look, I'm not going to lie, I hate using balancers. So part of me wants to not do one fours just because they need a four four balancer. Um, the other option. Yeah, I assume a lawyer has to do with being in range of my own little grid because my grid's not that large. So those trees might have been initially outside of my own grid when I did that. My grid's not that big, so I don't know. I don't actually know how that worked. Um, but anyway, my thought on... I'm looking for train stops in my inventory. That's why I'm staring around like an idiot, because I don't have them. My thought on balancers is, A, we could use circuit-based unloading such that we don't need balancers at all. 
because of the new decider combinators, I'm wondering if there's an easy way, just and in general, the new combinator logic, is there an easy way to turn on and off the like unloading sections? Uh, we're gonna need a lot more chests. Let me go grab some more chests. Four 16 trains. Uh, no thanks. <laughs> no thanks on that count. What I will do is grab a bunch more steel chests. So, yeah, because one four trains are nice, especially if we're doing a two way rail system. The train throughput is severely hampered. <laughs> Circuits are much simpler than balancers. There's no way that could go wrong. I'm glad you agree. I'm glad you see it the same way. Um, oh my. So yeah, here's here's what I'm thinking. So we've got our one four station. Like, am I am I panicking for copper right now? Are we? Uh, I'm down to eighty six thousand. I might need to do just a belt from that copper patch right now. I think we might have issues if we don't. Stone is probably fine because mostly stone goes to military science and stuff that isn't as pivotal to the base. So I'm not super worried about stone. Um, and iron's fine. We just need to increase the throughput of it at some point to two belts. But copper. Yeah, I think we need to do a copper belt. From that patch. And let's see. So it literally can go straight past this full belt. What's up, bum on the run? Welcome, welcome. We will get your name in game here in a little bit. In between the YouTube recordings, probably. If that's fine with you. So yeah, this is basically what we're doing. This is our life now. The question is, do I have enough belts? And I think the answer is going to be no. So I'm going to go grab a few more. And grab a few more. Old iron patch is almost done. Starter patch. So we grab down here. Nope, that's mining drills. What am I doing? I have 59 of those. That should be plenty. Grab some more belts. But yeah, the, the copper... I kind of wish we weren't belting it. But I, I don't... This train system setup is going to take a hot minute, and I don't think I want to have no more copper until we're done with that. Though, do I really need more copper? Do I really need more copper? Maybe. I don't know. Whatever. This is only going to take a few minutes. The cost of setting this up is pretty small. 1-1 one, one trains are your guilty pleasure. 1-1 one, one trains are cool. Um, I actually agree with you. They're also, at least in Pyanodons, quite effective. Because you often just don't need high volumes of things, and the things you do need higher volumes of tend to stack to very large stack sizes. Although, didn't they undo that? I think they undid that. Never mind. That's not true. That was, that was true in the previous version. That's less true now. Not a fan of the three panel inventory. Oh, oh, this? Yeah, I'm not. It's too big. It fills up the whole screen. 
and it makes it harder. I think this makes it easier to grab what you want. And you don't often, the reason I'm not a fan of it is how often do you need to look at this? Not very often. So why would it be shown every single time you open your inventory? Um, the only time you need to look at it is when you need to change a logistics request or look at your trash or grab something out of the trash, which again is like never, okay, never is a bad word. It is rarely the use case, right? The Seeing the trash slots is very unnecessary 95% of the time or more. Maybe, maybe legitimately 99% of the time that trash slots are used, you don't actually need to see them. You just need to use them and know that they're there. What am I doing? I have the blueprint. I have the technology. Oh, that just feels so good. All right, so get that built. My bots are gonna take a second. But yeah, that feels good. Now, this is gonna be a problem. So sometimes I will build extras on the outside. Oh, I'm like, wow, I thought 59 drills would be enough. I think I underestimate how many drills you need on a patch. So we'll have to come back. Um, but in this case, when you only need to move the top layer, what I will do is I'll just move this layer up one, like that, and then do this. And then we have full coverage of the patch still. And we didn't need to add like a whole extra row or something. Um, with these ones, I will need an extra miner because there are two extra tiles. So then that still wouldn't cover it. So in this case, I will add one extra miner. Like that. All right, and then turrets will be needed. Um, at least for basic defense. I didn't really bring very much ammo, so that could be a problem. This is where having laser turrets starts to get pretty helpful because you can just spam laser turrets and power. You don't need to worry about ammo anymore. What do quality drills do? So we actually learned that from the FFF. Um, it's kind of weird. It doesn't show you here. You do get more productivity from quality drills, uh, but it's weird that it doesn't show a diamond pip. It could be that it uses less resources. I think it's not productivity, but ore depletion. So that's why it's not showing up. Um, here, it shows it in the Factoriopedia. Resource drain is 100% by default, and that goes down. 83% for just uncon- That's a huge boost, right? Because that means you get one divided by that, more resources. So one over 0.83 is an extra 20% or to be fair though that's only on one miner so you would need all of your miners to be that quality to get 20% more ore on the whole patch that feels like a reasonable bonus to me but yeah legendary is is six times in your your ore patch and that's without even um Discussing the productivity upgrades that you get for ore mining. What am I looking for? What am I looking for? Come on, Kynex. Get with it. My brain is a little addled after the 12 hour stream. I did get good sleep, but uh, I feel it in my throat a little bit, all the talking that we did. Oh, I'm completely out of firearm packages. That's bad. Um. Not 600 would be enough to give everybody 50. That was not the case. All right, that should be enough to finish things off. Hmm. Whatever. I'm calling that quits. 
Okay, so you... Right here. How do I want to do this? Just merge as quickly as possible. This one will merge. This one will merge. Okay. And then we need some big power poles. That should be good. What was this? Just, yeah, I don't have the drills. You don't have the drills! You know, I can walk faster if I... Oh, no, I can't. I have belt immunity equipped. <laughs> That's funny. Alright, that should get me... Well, I can't tell. It should get me copper. I really need a radar up there. Not having radar coverage of a mining outpost is a recipe for disaster. Can't even tell if your turrets are keeping up or not. It gets attacked. Yeah, belt immunity on the tank is nice. It, it kind of kind of doesn't matter because most of the time when you're driving a tank, you're not. Um, does toggle exoskeleton also toggle belt immunity? There is no toggle for belt immunity. I wonder if there's a mod that does that. I bet there there is or will be. Because it would be kind of nice if you could just hit a hotkey to toggle your belt immunity. I guess I could take out my power armor. I would do it. All right, so we've already hooked up everything that 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 we need to hook up for that. So that'll be more copper while we're working there. Uh, what's up, Code Green? Welcome, welcome. How goes developing mods for Space Age? Uh, I'm gonna need bulk inserters, but yeah. Okay, so here's here's my vague thoughts. Is what if... What if we somehow used circuits instead of a balancer? Is that absolutely crazy? So what we need is to measure the total available space and make sure that the the space in each set is remaining constant. So, so each one of these is going to have a total. And we're going to want belts to stop flowing if the total is less than the average, basically. So we need to read this iron ore versus the total iron ore. Hmm. So... Yes, I'm fully aware, don't worry, that a 4x4 balancer would be the uh, simpler decision here. But I want to play with combinators. So, play with combinators we shall. Um, the problem is separating the signals. Uh, Aloy, that's only if you have four output belts. Or, uh, not even true, if you had four output belts that were all going to a smelter, and then you balanced the ores from the smelter, then you could have... well, is that different? I don't know. I don't know. Um, okay, so what's another way to do this? Let me get red... go in here. So red can carry the total. 
And then... If only we could... I might need an arithmetic combinator here. Because... Oh my! Excuse me, sirs and madams. How dare you. Um... I'm standing in an acid pool. Alright, so... We could do... Iron on green is less than iron on red. But we need iron on red divided by four is the problem. So, so we're gonna need something to do divide iron on red by four. So we will need a single arithmetic. Uh, I'll just plop it here and we'll keep it on red. And output onto red. So basically, this will take uh, iron ore, divide it by four, and then it'll output a new signal that can be anything. We'll just call it A or I for iron. Well, no, this is a generic blueprint. So we'll output A. So A is the the signal of iron divided by four. And then you can have a decider combinator for each of these little belts to enable. And it will decide if the iron we have is greater than the average, which is A. A for average, look at that. Um, then we should flow. Then we output green. Yeah, I mean, I think that that works. Uh, we probably should divide by like yeah, greater than or equal to the average. The problem is, I'm I'm not sure how this is gonna met like modulus type stuff. Like if we have. If we had nine, what would the average divide out to be? Would it count as two or three? Does it round? I don't know how it rounds. So I almost want to like add one to the average um, or sub subtract one from the average so that they're kind of always flowing. Uh, so I you can't do two math steps, though. That would be the other nice thing, is if arithmetic combinators could, like, do two steps of math to a signal before it outputs. Um, yeah, let me test real quick uh, just what happens with... Uh, let's see. Combinator... You know, I should probably have, I should have a rail building one on four and then we can have like a combinator building set on five here. So we'll have all the, all the things. I'll even put lamps on there because those are sort of related alarms. All right, so, uh, okay, so let's do constant, Arithmetic. And then here we've got one. I'll put 10 of them. Divide by four. I'll put anything. All right, so that at two point, at exactly 2.5, it's still outputting two. Um, at 2.75, it's still outputting two. So it's rounding down. So... Um... Let's see. So if it's rounding down, then that means if this is greater than or equal to the average, and the average is rounded down. So if I had...
Uh, why is this breaking my brain? Because it's complicated. That's why. Um, so if we had like, let's say a thousand ore, or let's say four thousand ore. That's an easy number. Uh, four thousand ore. Then. Ooh, parameterized blueprints. Yeah, that's a great idea. Um, divided by four, we're going to get 1,000. Let's say we have 4,003 ore. It's still going to show 1,000 for the average. So that means this is good to go. Because it will flow... More, it will still be flowing... It'll flow out the extras, basically. The problem would be if it rounded, if it was rounding the other way, which obviously in this system it wouldn't happen, but if you're designing some other system that does some similar things, the rounding could get you in trouble the other way, because then it would stop flowing those extra three, and things would be stopping. So I think we're good to go with this idea. Um, so yeah. Anyway, um... Yeah, do you know why they decided to release the game to content creators one full week before the general release? I would have understood if it was with a release embargo. Um, well, it, it, it is a beta. This is a, this is a testing beta, and this is the same beta that they used for the LAN party, so all the people that had access at the LAN party. Basically, the reason they dropped the embargo because the beta stuff, I think, just makes a lot of sense. I don't think anybody's complaining that they gave some people beta access to help test the game. And I think their decision to give people, um, specifically people who have a lot of experience with the game, beta access, rather than just a random smattering of purchasers, I think that actually makes a lot of sense too. Because basically they were handpicking their testing team to be people that are already known in the community to some level. They're not just randos. And that kind of gives a higher probability that they're going to give good feedback, that they're going to give helpful feedback. Modders in the community know a lot about the game. So like they're, they're kind of bringing in almost like a crack testing team without having to like actually do a lot of work to figure out who those people are. So I think that's actually really brilliant. And I think more game companies should do that, like specifically just beta access looking for feedback from you know content creators and modders and such because i think that's just a really easy way to get the people you want for such a team yes it's true there are random members of the public that would be great members of that team too but it's a lot harder to find those people right and then yes second point is marketing right like you want people to buy your game and so giving access to content creators early is going to generate a lot of hype so I think that's the simplest reason. It's probably not the only reason, but it's worth remembering that that is a reason too. And it's not, it's certainly not standard to actually have streamers playing the full game a week before release. I don't think that's, I certainly some other games have done it, but normally it's more like you give streamers access to make some like teaser content or like reviews of the game. That's a bit more normal-ish, but I don't know. It's not that crazy. I mean, is this just good? We enable if green is greater than zero. Is this just it? Is this the is this the truth? This blueprint right here? I don't know. It's probably going to break spectacularly, but uh, I definitely... These got unselected. I don't know what happened there. Oh, it's only on red. Right, right, right. Um, so... Let me just make sure this is all still good. So, we're dividing iron by four. We're outputting A. The input... wire is the red wire, which is connected to all the chests. Then... Oh, no, I, I have screwed up. We are not done yet. We need to connect the green input to each bank of chests as well. Otherwise, these can't read the amount of iron. In the green... So each each bank of chests has a green wire. And that's telling this one how much iron is in that bank of chests. So then we want to read iron on... I guess we could read iron on red and green no that's gonna add red and green together we want iron on only green 
Oh, this is so nice. Iron on only green can be greater than or equal to the total of A. There's only one A signal, so that's fine. Um, okay. So let's test. Uh, of course, I don't have any iron ore on me. Why would I? Yeah, yeah. A lot of a lot of company. I think it shows confidence in the game because if the game was bad, less people would buy it because streamers would be hating on it right now. So I think that makes sense. Okay. Hold on. Um if it's more than the average, it should be flowing. So things should slow down when they're getting too empty. So look at that. See, now that there's some ore in here, these other ones have stopped. Because it wants to let this one flow out until it's free again. Perfect. So yeah, Shield Flyer, what we're making is basically a balancer that will keep... Rather than using a 4x4 balancer, which is what people tend to do um, for train stops, I wanted to do something with combinators. And just because I want to use combinators more. And basically, what it'll do is make sure that these banks of chests have the same amount of empty slots as each other without having to balance these belts. I could use only one belt and that's still, well, no, that wouldn't work. Because if I only use one belt, it'll stop the other ones. But I still need, I guess what this does is it means you don't need a balancer. You only need something that allows belts to flow into other spots. Um, and if I only want one belt out, I can just do that. Which is ironic because this is already a perfect four to one balancer. But I do like this because it prevents issues. Like what if one train was only halfway full for some reason, right? Like this fixes that. So I don't I don't hate this idea. Um, it's still. Still has issues. Um, having confidence in the game would be to release it directly to the public. Well, that doesn't make any sense, CFG. That's just changing the release date. <laughs> I, that doesn't, like, that would just mean the release date's a week earlier. Uh, so that doesn't really, uh, let's see, is it this one? Because that'll go on the right side. Yeah. So I actually need to be doing it like this. So I don't know why I put it on the end like that. Um... But yeah, it wouldn't make any sense to just release it to the public a week earlier. Because that's not... I mean, they could have made the release date sooner, but why... I don't know. Wanting to make the game the best it can be before the release date uh, to the public, I think, makes a lot of sense. Alright. Um, I am doing that wrong. There we go. Okay, so that's good. And now we connect the wires to these guys. Oh, I meant to copy the settings on that one. That's why I left it. Wait, what? Copy. Paste. 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 There we go. If 
anything, we needed more time. Hey, Theranos. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, there will certainly be a 2.1 patch, I think, is clear. Um, the game is great. They do have good reason to be confident in it, but there's still a lot of little things that are probably going to need to be ironed out, and I don't think they're going to have it all done by the public release date. So, yeah, it's good. It's good. I think the public should have confidence in the game, um, but there certainly will be a 2.1 patch as well. All right, what are we getting over here? Stone, I think, was the, the main one we wanted to be worried about first. Bring that up here. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out if this is even doing anything. Because, I mean, it helps to make sure we're staying balanced. In the case of not full input chains. Though that's going to be pretty rare. If we end up using multiple belts out of this, then we'd want a balancer anyway, because we want the ore from each area to be able to reach. It just changes the need. It changes you from needing a full balancer balancer, right? Because like then this would allow I mean, would this work? <laughs> hey, Theranos. Nice. Um, like, would this break or would this not work or what would happen? So if we were using all three of these belts fully, then, the t then we'd be okay, I think. But it would, it would, unevenly pull but is that gonna work <sighs> my brain okay so this one is half of this and half of this so that's half of three half of four this one is a fourth of everything and this one is a fourth of everything But the question, because it'll stop these eventually when when they're too full, because we're not pulling from these, or well, it'll stop these because we're not pulling from these as much. Right? Because the top one is only going top one is fully going into this slot so half of the top one's here uh, I don't actually know what's happening here let's see let's why not we'll see what happens I mean the problem is I'm not using all three belts so I won't really know what this will do for a long time I'm certainly not gonna blueprint it everywhere and act like it's the truth that's for sure I'm just going to reverse engineer the usual 4x4. Also, Bum on the Run, thank you for the sub. Very much appreciated. Uh, we need to switch this to stone. Because this is going to be a stone train. Alright. Um, let's see, we'll call it main stone unload. But I should do the... Just pull up the Windows emoji thing. To try to get this. I, that's so funny. My brain just did Windows period, which brings up the emoji menu to type. Can you? What happens if you try to put emojis in here? Oh my gosh. It works. <laughs> and there's an emoji in Factorio. Did you guys know you can put emojis in Factorio? Oh my gosh. The, the discovery. What am I looking for? There had to have been an easier way to get that. Um... Okay, so it's Unicode, so yeah, I guess it makes sense. Certainly is cursed, though. So there's stone unload, and then we come back. 
to here. Oh my god. These these angles are breaking me. Oh, I can't tell if I like it or not. But it certainly is something. Um, what I wish you could do is rotate... Like, obviously it's connecting to here, but I wish you could rotate... Can you? By hitting R? No, like, like what rotation the where your mouse is holding is locked into. If that makes sense. Like, I want it to go here, but force itself to be going down rather than at that angle. Um, but it, and if maybe you can do that, I just don't know how to hit the right buttons to make it do that. But yeah, so I will use for now a one way and we'll have pass throughs or pass bys, or whatever you want to call them. Get out of here, kids. Uh, let's get some turrets because they seem to like this area. Oh, I don't have any ammo. All you have to do is press R, but that's what I was doing. The problem is it's control R, because I'm already holding control. So you have to let go of control? No, no, I'm hitting R right now. It's not doing anything. Shift works. There you go. Shift works, but control breaks it. Control R isn't working. Um, so if you're using the control planner, it acts differently than the plow through obstacle planner. Weird. That feels inconsistent to me, but what do I know? Uh, we might want to go up to a hundred miners because you need more than more than fifty a lot of the time, as we learned. Uh, all right, grab some more belts. Get rid of that ore, and then why am I here? Ammo. Ammo munition. Perfect. And turrets. I don't want to repair those, so I'm getting rid of them. I do have red ammo. I should probably go get some for my firearms. But that's on the other side of the base. That's, that's so later. Also, I probably need to transition... Uh, out of this YouTube episode and into the next one soon because we're already over an hour, but we're having fun So let's finish this rail setup at least um, All right, so this one is to go get stone, so we're gonna have to go all the way down here Joy 231 rails we do have enough Yeah, I'm not going to put any signals on here because what I'll be doing is I'll, I'll blueprint a um, two-way pass section where they can, you know, the one on... Basically, it'll split into two lanes and one's going north, we'll have to go on the right side. And then that'll be where they can pass by each other. But for now, we don't need any because I've only got the one rail. But then once we add, uh, well, I guess it won't be until I add coal, because I'm not getting any more iron down here. At least not anywhere close. Yeah, it, it is kind of funny, Code Green, you're mentioning like having to blueprint turns and stuff. The planner really needs a 90 degree version. Um, I don't know if it's holding alt, because alt doesn't do anything. I know alt is tied to alt mode, but who holds alt for alt mode? Like, that's just, is that even a thing? Call me crazy. I don't think alt mode should use the alt button. The alt button feels too powerful to be default bound to something that you touch once and rarely touch again. Like, alt mode is something you tend to just turn on and then leave on. And everywhere once in a while, you'll hit it again. But it feels really weird that they're using such a powerful button, like a modifier button, 
for something that isn't really something you modify frequently or even ever. It's just like a one-time button press. So it feels like it should be a hotkey, not um, a modifier button, if that makes sense. It's not like Diablo, where you hold alt mode to see items on the ground for a minute and then turn it off, you know? It's like you're either playing with alt mode on or you're playing with alt mode off. It's a toggle, not a hold down thing. So it feels really weird that alt is doing alt mode. I know it's weird because it's called alt mode, so they might have to call it something else if they change it off of alt, but there's my hashtag feedback for today. I say for today like I'm done for today. Um, there will be lots more feedback. The feedback will continue until the beatings stop. <laughs> or something like that. All right, so we need to clear off this patch, and then I probably need to say this is it for the YouTube episode. Don't worry, we will keep streaming. Um, but I transition, for those who don't know, we record the episodes for the YouTube series while we're streaming, and then we do an outro, and then we come back and keep streaming. So I'll only be gone for 20 seconds, don't you worry. Uh, have I had to deal with the increased HP yet? I have, and it is very noticeable. Um, they're already at like 1,000 HP. So that's about triple what they normally have. It's not like unmanageable. Oh, really? Oh, I forgot to put ammo in them. Well, that'll do it. Uh, I guess we should run back up there. <laughs> um, let's see here. We can accelerate our run back using the power. Oh, wow. Um, it's kind of hard to put fuel into rails now because it like is very large and it changes everything. All right, we need to get back and do some shooting here. Where are you? Wait, where'd they go? Oh, they found a turret that had ammo in it. Good for them. Good for them. Self, self-regulating biters. All right, I do think we'll have to call it a YouTube episode there. So um, with that, I will bid you all adieu for episode nine and yeah, as usual, if you'd like to support me making these videos, head over to patreon.com slash crydax and check that out or join the Discord. The Crydania Discord is a great place. There's a link in the about section and leave a comment, you future YouTubians, if you want or don't. I don't care. And I'll see you guys in the next episode.